Hi, I'm Rebecca Keppel here for scrapbook.com and we're excited to introduce to you the reinkers for Umbrella Crafts Premium Dye Inks. There are 45 reinkers for their 45 dye inks and we're going to show you how to reink one of their premium dye ink pads and then we're going to show you five other techniques that you can use these reinkers for. Everything from creating paint splatters on your projects to watercoloring with them to dyeing texture paste or modeling paste, using them for several different out of the box ideas so that you have more bang for your buck when you buy your reinkers. So let's get started. So the first and most obvious use for these Umbrella Crafts reinkers is to reink one of your ink pads. Now, the Umbrella Crafts premium dye ink pads come with a nice tight lid, so they shouldn't dry out and you shouldn't have to reink them for a while. But say you leave your lid off overnight and you notice that your pad is not as juicy as you want, then you'll definitely want to pick up your reinker rather than buy a whole new pad. And that's the beauty, the reinkers are more affordable than the pads. So grab your reinkers that you need and it comes in this great little squeeze bottle. So you can see it's a nice little nozzle tip at the end there and it's filled with your ink color. And I have teal here. So all you're going to do is take the reinker and squeeze out the ink and run it along the pad like this. And you're just going to go down the entire pad, re-inking it like this. Depending on how dry your pad is will depend on how much ink you need to squeeze out. But for this one, it was already pretty juicy, so I'm not going to use too much ink. And then you're just going to let it sit for a little while so that the ink can soak in. And if you notice that you miss some spots, you can see that there's a different color because the ink is wet. You can go back in and fill in. And then again, you're going to want to let it sit for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so. But I'm just going to show you how juicy it will get once you re-ink it. So then, here we go. We tap it on our stamp and we have lots of nice ink in there. And you can see you get a great impression from these stamps and inks with the Umbrella Crafts reinkers. So that's the obvious use for these reinkers. Now we're gonna show you five techniques or more that you can use these reinkers for besides just reinking your pads. So the first technique we're going to try out is creating ink splotches. Ink splotches or splatters are very popular. They're an artistic effect that you can add to your layouts and cards. A lot of people use mist for this, um, but these little reinkers are great for it too and they have a nice opaque finish. So it looks more like paint without the difficulty of using paint. So you can see here on this layout, I created these fun little ink splatters and they are using two different colors of Umbrella Crafts Premium Inks. And all I did was add some ink to a palette and then splatter them on the paper. But I'm gonna just show you how quick and easy this little technique is. So I have two different colors here. I have the Fresh Cut Grass. And I'm just gonna squeeze a little out into my palette. And then I also have Aqua, which is one of my favorite colors. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit out, just a couple of drops. It doesn't have to be very much. And then I'm going to use a little paintbrush. This is just an inexpensive paintbrush because sometimes the ink is a little sticky. So unless you clean it right away, it might stain or, you know, even kind of harden your brush a little bit. So don't use your really nice brushes for this technique. Use something that you don't care as much about. So I'm just going to dip my brush into the ink and then I'm just going to splatter. Isn't that fun? And if you want bigger droplets, you kind of do that motion. And then I can even just grab some of, because blue and green look so great together, I can just grab it right on top. And you'll see, once these dry, those splatters will lighten up a lot. The aqua is already lightening, but because dye ink sinks into paper, it will look dark at first, and then as it is absorbed into the paper, it will lighten up and you'll get an effect that's more like this. So that's the first easy way to use these reinkers. 
The second way that you can use your reinkers is to create your own custom ink pad. Now, I have this Ranger DIY dye ink pad, which is blank right now. And the fun thing about these is that you can create ombre pads, you can create tie-dye pads, you can create two-tone pads, kind of whatever you're in the mood for, whatever strikes your fancy. So just grab a couple of these Umbrella Crafts dye reinkers. I have Sunbeam here and unscrew the cap. You have that great little nozzle and you're just going to, just like you would re-ink a pad, you're gonna probably have to use a little bit more ink for this. So we're going to add some Sunbeam to the top. Okay. So I'm gonna go over it once, but you can see on the side here that it's just starting to sink in. So I'm gonna keep going until I notice that it's really sunk in all the way down the pad. Otherwise, you're just gonna have to keep re-inking it and that's no fun, so let's do this. And then I'm gonna go with some fresh cut grass, or no, let's do teal. And let's do a bigger line of teal. And the nice thing about using dye inks for this technique is that they do blend a little bit, so you can overlap instead of having a stark line in between, you can kind of use your inker to overlap and there will be some blending between those two colors, which is really nice and gives you a great effect when you're stamping. And then let's take some sky blue and create our last bit of color down here. Again, I am overlapping a little bit so that we have some blending in between these two colors as well. And that looks like a fun pad to me. And so I'll show you how fun it is to stamp with these guys. And you can see on this card how there's a gradient of color in the carrots and the beet as well. And that's because I created a fun little ink pad that had cantaloupe and orange soda in it. And I can't remember the colors I used for the beet, but, and same with the watering can, aqua and another color. So you can create a bunch of different unique ink pads that will give you this fun effect in your stamping. So with this one, we're going to, let's see if we can turn it over and stamp and you do kind of want to move it a little bit along the stamp to get some blending and is that so pretty so these are great with these big background stamps because you can kind of go along the stamp like this and just kind of tap it and back and forth like this, and you'll get a great mix of colors, and they will blend in certain spots. So we'll turn this guy over. Isn't that fun? So you can see some of the stamping didn't come clear, and I probably should have re-inked a lot more, but you get the idea that you're gonna get a really beautiful rainbow effect or um, just different effects of colors blending together and it's very easy and affordable to do on your own. In this next technique, we're going to use the dye reinkers to dye modeling paste. You can use modeling paste, texture paste, whatever thick paste that you have that you like to use and create texture on your projects. And we're going to just use a couple of drops and color our modeling paste and you can see how you get this great gradient of color if you use a couple of different colors and let them blend. You can also see how it just creates this awesome texture, whether you're using it in a planner, on a card, on a layout, it's great and it will match your stamping if you have the same ink pads as reinkers that you're using. So let's get started. We're gonna use this Prima modeling paste that's opaque and white and we're going to use a couple of different 
colors of reinkers. So I'm going to get a couple of different splotches of paste here. Okay. And you can see on this example that I did both a blue and a yellow and then was able to create the green in between by letting them mix a little bit. So maybe we'll do the same type of thing. So we're going to take our Umbrella Crafts reinkers and start with a couple of drops. It's just like using food coloring and icing. Start with a few drops and if you want a brighter, richer color, then add some more. I like that, but I really want it a lot richer, so I'm going to add quite a bit more. There we go. That's kind of a fun color. So let's take the sunbeam for this other one. That's nice and bright, so I like this amount. Perfect for the yellow. If you want a perfect application and you want it thin and not so raised, you can use a credit card or a gift card or something and just bring it along. I don't mind the variations in texture and height. I think it's kind of fun and adds to the homemade feel. So I just like to use my palette knives. So I have a little template here that's got all these fun little triangles on it. I'm just gonna lay it down and then I'm gonna start in one corner and I'm going to apply the blue. And I am using watercolor paper for this. You can just use cardstock, or I think like Deidre did in her planner, she did use cardstock. So you can use cardstock as well. The watercolor holds up a little bit if you use a real thick effect like I do here. And then we're going to apply our yellow. And we're going to make sure that there's at least a line in the middle that they cross over and that they blend a little bit. And that's how you're going to get a little bit of green. So even if you only have two colors of reinkers, if they are primaries, you can get a nice third color in there as well. Like I said, I like the effect of the strokes in there. I'm okay with that. If you're not, you can definitely use a gift card or something and really just scrape it. And then when we peel away, we get this fun effect. And once it's dry, you have nice dimension, you have color, and you can then match your modeling paste or texture paste to any of the stamping that you're going to do with your Umbrella Crafts inks. For this next technique, we're going to use the premium dye reinkers from Umbrella Crafts to watercolor. So we can see here on Deidre Long's beautiful planner, she used the dye inkers right here on this wood veneer and she just let the dye inker right from the bottle soak into the wood veneer. So that's one way you can use them to color embellishments or as in this like a title piece. The other way that you can do it is to stamp and emboss and make a resist. So here I stamped this little dot pattern and then I used uh, clear embossing powder, heat set it and then it acts as a resist and then I wet the whole thing so I'm using watercolor cardstock and dropped the color in and you can see it just creates this awesome watercolor effect. I did the same thing here in a gradient of different colors and here I stamped these fun flowers and clear embossed them as well and then I drew little circles so it kind of creates a tie-dye effect. So I'm going to show you how quick and easy this is. We're going to use this panel here. This is watercolor paper that has been stamped and heat embossed with clear embossing powder. I've let it dry and now we're going to get it nice and wet. So we're going to use just this little mini mister here 
and we're gonna spray a ton of water on this panel. And that's why, for this technique, you really do need to use watercolor paper. Okay, we're gonna get it nice and wet. And then we're going to take this one, this is the Umbrella Crafts Aqua Reinker, and just put a couple of drops in our palette. You can add some water to it, but I like to try and go directly with the ink and just start dropping it into the wet spots here on our card panel. And then you can keep spraying. This is one where you really need the panel to stay nice and wet. You can drip technique this. You can just keep maneuvering some more ink on there. And then you can start adding some other colors. So we have the teal here. And then if the color is just a little too rich, you can add some droplets of water on top. And you can see they're going to start to blend together. And if it gets too dry and you want to pull it off, you could use a baby wipe or a paper towel and do that. I like to let these just air dry, so I'm just going to show you again the samples that we did because if you heat set it, it's going to move it around even more and if you want that nice vibrant color, you're going to want to just let it air dry. If you want a lighter color, you can start adding some water to your palette and then drop in this lighter, more watery color onto your wet card panel and you can see that's more of a watercolor effect and less of the tie-dye effect. So it just depends on what you're looking for, but you can see here, again, that I created these fun tie-dye looks by using a pink reinker, a yellow reinker, and letting them blend. This one is similar to the card panel that we were creating just now. I sort of dropped in these darker drops of reinker. And here I did some brushing, so I watered them down quite a bit, and that's why you have that more watery color effect. So this is just a fun technique and a way to get some water coloring out of your reinkers. For this last technique, we're going to use the reinkers to create our own mist. And this is fun because again, you can match it up with your stamping. So if you buy a reinker to match your stamp pads, you can create a mist to match whatever stamping you're doing. So on this layout, I created two different colors of mist. And you can see that they blend beautifully together, that they are just have this great effect on them. You can create it as dark or as light as you need. And one fun thing to do is to add these perfect pearls because it's hard to see in the camera, but it does have this nice pearly effect to it as well. So all you need to do to create your own perfect pearl mist with Umbrella Crafts reinkers is use some of these mini misters. I just have water in there. And we're going to drop a couple of droplets of mist, of inker in there. I think I used five or six. I can do a couple more. I think that's about maybe 15 or so. Again, it's your preference, lighter, darker. And then we're going to take these Ranger Perfect Pearls and just get a little scoop and add it to the mister. And these mix very, very well. Once I get everything inside my mister, I'm just going to shake it up until everything's nice and combined. And then we can make a green one as well with the fresh cut grass. Okay. And just a little bit of perfect pearls in this one. It's not an exact science. Just have fun with it. Shake that one up as well. 
And then I like using a template with this technique because it has just such a great effect. It's a lot easier than trying to create your own effects on the page. You get these great flowers from the template just by misting on it. So at this point, then you can just start adding your color to your page. I like having two colors because then there's blending that happens in between. Okay, and then we'll go back to the blue. And then again, we'll have blending in between. And then when we lift our stencil carefully, we've created a beautiful floral pattern on our paper. So I hope this video has given you some ideas of ways that you can use your Umbrella Crafts dye re-inkers for other things than just inking up your ink pads.